OK, so now I'm in. I'm going to the CD app home server. OK. Can you guys see it? Oh, it's I mean. OK. Hope that's better. Now, is this better? Now I'm just going to run set up streams. <coughs> Complaining about Spring XD something? Yeah, it's funny here. It's do you, do you guys have geodes up and running, right? No. Anyway, shouldn't complain about the holes. Yeah. Um, because I'm using the VM here as well. It's weird. Deploying module ACP. Seem to have deployed everything. Yeah. Yeah. Any? Here, actually, it, it worked. Does it? Does this step works for for someone? For anyone? They set up streams after fixing the path. No. No one. And then it works. Yeah, I copied it. Right? We can just symbolic things that I prefer this one. Yeah. But that's how it works, man. It's I went over to the X directory, found the thing. It's but it's it's yeah, it should be only the variable anyway, but you did so the the solution you did was to come here yeah, and copy, copy, right? Yeah. yeah. No. Okay, yeah. It, so it shouldn't be required. This kinda that, that's more when you are actually implementing your own modules. So the, the the export should actually oops. No, it's not this one. Oh I have run it there. So this export here should should fix that. So if you run this and then start the single node, that should be okay. Okay, so do we Wait and fix the Spring XD, or you guys want to move to the Zeppelin and Spark part? So let's do it. So Zeppelin. Oh, actually, that's that's a very that's, a, that's a very good question. That's a very see someone is paying attention here, right? <laughs> just joking. So just to get back to the slide, so we can sum up this and talk a little bit about Zeppelin. So a couple things that we had in the roadmap for Apache Geode, right? So HDFS persistence, so remember that we, we said that the, the, the regions, they can be in memory and persisted on disk. But originally, that's like local disk. So now we also have another way to say that I have the region, I want the regions in memory and persisted to HDFS. Uh, uh, off heap, so in memory data, we are pretty much most of the time talking about JVM heap, so now you have a, no, also, an, another option, which is off heap, so it's not inside the JVM, so it's just another like a Java balloon memory, like another pool of memory. Uh, Lucene search, so you can do like something similar to Elasticsearch, but with data in, in Geode. Spark integration, which is the thing we are going to play here with Zeppelin, and the Cloud Foundry service, right? So, just very quick. Uh, recap on, on, on Spark. So who, who, who here is familiar with Spark, Apache Spark? No one? Someone? Okay, a few. So, but heard about it maybe? Uh, okay, great. So, well, nice. I tried to summarize it in a phrase here, I think. So Spark is this kind of uh, uh, streaming and distributed processing framework uh, under Apache that is now very popular. And it's it's has a bunch of benchmarks and proven that it's like way faster than, than original MapReduce and, and whatnot. And the reason for that is that most of the processing they do is actually in memory. Uh, they have their own data structures for that. It's called an RDD, uh, which is resilient. Help me here, Jincha. I always forgot RDD. Resilient something data. 
yeah, well, whatever. It's another acronym, right? So the thing about the RDD is that it's, it's, a, it's a data structure that you can define all the steps you are going to do with an RDD before it actually grabs the data, before it actually interacts with the data. So it's like saying, well, whenever I'm doing this with this table, I want to filter the ones that have a certain property, and then I want to, the result of that, I want to do another step, which is transform to something else, and then I actually want to execute the job. So you do all these steps, and then just in the final step, when you say, for example, collect or execute or something, it's going to actually, actually hit the servers and start filtering and executing, right? So that's, that's kind of one way to summarize it. And then what we are doing with Geode is, is providing a way to, to export regions, so data that we have inside Geode as RDDs for Spark. So if you are using the Spark API, for you, it's, it seems that you are just using RDDs. You don't, you don't know that it's Geode under the hoods. Uh, and also, of course, after you do this processing or this, this transformations in Spark, you may want to persist this back to some data store, because Spark is a processing framework. It's not actually a, 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 a way to store data itself, right? Most of the time, uh, you are dealing with HDFS, but then HDFS is not that fast. So Geo is a, is a better alternative here, right? Because it's in memory. Uh, and another functionality of the Spark connector is that you can use those queries that we did using GFish in Geo. You can execute that inside Spark. For those that are not familiar with Spark 2, I guess it's important to say that Spark it's, has its core, which is RDDs and whatnot, but then it has, sub, it has some sub-projects, right? Like Spark SQL, Spark Streaming, Spark Machine Learning, uh, and something to run R in Spark, Spark and R. something to run Python in Spark. So it's like a bunch of satellites uh, or sub-projects, right, as part of the Spark as well. And with that, you can kind of root, you, you, you can kind of use Geo OQL with Spark SQL and just execute like SQL from Spark, reading data from Geode. Seems a lot of, it's a lot of uh, uh, concepts I know, but as a quick intro, right? And then there is Zeppelin. So Zeppelin is another way to interact with, with Spark, which is pretty much so, are you guys familiar with Scala? So Scala has a repo, right? This terminal that you can pretty much like do everything, like program in the terminal if you want. Uh, so Zeppelin is pretty much the same thing, but web-based. So you, you can use, like, you can write Scala, or in this case, Spark code using a web interface, and you hit, like, execute, and then it's going to call Spark and do and those, all, all the processing in the back. Uh, it has a bunch of interpreters, for example, uh, Spark, but you can also do, like, Markdown if you want, Flink, Python, and other stuff. Yeah, I know. Uh, so Spark, Geode, demo, uh, demo right? Sure. The Zeppelin? Yes. Yes. Exactly that. Sorry. Oh, eighty, eighty. The the port. Oh, yeah, that's why I skipped. I just want to kill that thing. Yeah, if you had the web console running, you might want to stop that. Exactly. Thank you, Dan. Oops. So you can hit this URL here, which is pretty much the default part. Are you guys with the connected green thing? Okay, mm -hmm. great. Go for it. So now 
we have this IoT lab note here. There's a lot of stuff here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and we have to fix some paths. But that's part of the lab. That will be like the exercise, right? I'll kind of help you guys here and cheat a little bit we'll because of quick. the time. Yeah, do quick. Uh, so this first step, I'm actually going to walk you through. I think it's maybe faster because of the time. So this first step, so th this is like a worksheet, and you are doing like a bunch of steps. So this first step is to, it's called like this, this DEP, which is a special interpreter in, in Zeppelin. That means that I'm making all these jars available in the class path. So for example, here I have the gem fire because of course I'm connecting to, to gem fire or to geode, and the, the, the connector itself, and then my, my data objects, right? The probe requests from the Raspberry Pi. So I have these three jars provision, and after you, you write all this, you click run, boom, it's in, your, it's in your class path now. You don't have to restart or do anything else. Then the next step here, I was just experimenting, for example, running some queries using the Spark connector, the Geode Spark connector API. So I was running a few queries. I could just play with that a little bit. And then the result of these queries are RDDs. So to make these RDDs available as a table so I can query them, I register as temp tables. Then you click, again, run here. Then the next step, for example, I can create a function using Scala. Like this is plain Scala. Remember that, that calculation that Fred was doing using the Groovy script inside Spring XD? If I want to do that in Spark or Zeppelin, I can do that here as well, for example. Last, after you do all this, so remember that we registered a few tables here, right? So now I can query this using the SQL interpreter. Percent SQL, and you write plain SQL, SQL, right? When you click that and run, Zeppelin has all these ways to visual, vi visualize the result of their query. By default, it would be this, which is a, just a table. But what I did here was to use like one of these uh, plot graphs, which, which generates me this. So it's a very nice way to have like uh, uh, dynamic uh, graphs plotted, right? And you can kind of play a little bit with the data here and change the SQL, run again, r r run again, change the SQL, run again. If you, for example, uh, hover any of this, for example, here we have all the devices, and I'm just, for example, grouping by the PID. So I know like for each Pi that I'm using here, I'm grouping all the devices around there. Actually, sorry, I'm, I'm grabbing all the events for a specific device around those pies. So I, I see that, for example, for a while, here, here I have just the, the, the timestamp, right? So for a while, this device was sending events close to this Raspberry Pi and then this Raspberry Pi. But then for, like, after that, it was actually close to the MacBook. Because when we were developing all this lab, we actually had like, he had only two pies and I had one. So the third one was his MacBook. <laughs> you can also enable your MacBook to capture other Wi-Fi. So yeah, NSA is for real. I mean, I'm kidding. Do, <laughs> what, what does that actually mean at the end? It's um, the same way you run analytics, for example, using SQL, using a solution like Hawk, for example, on a Hadoop HDFS. If you have any memory data grid, there's actually in memory really low latency, high scalability, high number of transactions, volumes. You can actually use Spark and Spark SQL on top of it to run real time analytics with information coming in real time. This is gonna process in memory, it's gonna be ultra quick. You can actually do SQL as well, use Spark SQL. And you can actually visualize that. So you can actually do real time uh, analytics based on in memory. Uh, information coming live. So this is all cache data, actually, but I can still play with the with the with the graphs, with the visualization, right? So remember that I had I executed that SQL, so I have all those fields available. 
Now I can pretty much drag and drop here and compose my, my diagram, right? I want to use this as key. Oh, this doesn't work. I actually, uh, I actually want the sign, all right? Let me. And then you can keep experimenting with the data, right, as you go. And then you say, ah, oh, you know what? OK, so this looks good in a bar chart, but I actually may want to generate a pie chart. So sure, here is how it would, would look like. So the idea for Zeppelin would be to you experiment, you run all these steps, you, here is your code, but then there are a couple options here that you can hide it and make it look like a report. So for example, the first thing I have here, right, this IoT lab, this is the name, but I can, I can write like markdowns if I want as well. And you can write like, it's pretty much like a report, it's, it's an HTML page, and you experiment with the data, do some processing, run the query, plot a graph, and say, oh, okay, great, this is a, this is a, a, a nice HTML page. You export the HTML page and deliver that as a, as a report. Uh, uh, silly, silly sure. There are no silly questions. Sorry? Spark. It's running Spark and connecting to Geode. That's the, the, the beauty of it. Because on the back, uh, when every time I run the query actually re uh, let me so. Here, for example, I'm getting the SQL context from Spark and firing a query against Geode. So it goes to Geode, grab the data, and then if I had to do any processing or the SQL itself, it's executing here using the Spark engine. And, it, and Spark would tell you when I did set up, uh, when, I clicked, when, I, when I did Zeppelin. Yes, when you start Zeppelin, it already embeds Spark libraries for you, so you can kind of do this iterative development using Spark. So think, think about it, for example, when you are actually doing Spark, if you just go to the Spark like uh, uh, documentation, like the, the introduction, right? You ha you start a Scala shell, Scala repo, right? Which just is a Scala repo with the Spark libraries available, right? And then you are pretty much writing on the console everything I'm writing here. That's kind of similar thing. So it's like running a local uh, Spark cluster, but just local, single node, so you can experiment with the data, but. Let's say you actually have a Spark cluster with, I don't know, any node to have master, servers, slaves, and whatnot. You can come to the interpreters here and set up the Spark context and say, hey, you know what? My Spark master, or the, the oh, I forgot, the, where is the property? Here, master. The master is not local. It's this thing running out there that has, I don't know, 1,000 nodes, whatever. And then you're pretty much experimenting with the data there. So because Spark has this, con this concept that whenever you are writing an app for Spark, you write everything here local, and then you dispatch this job to execute there. Right? It's pretty much like dispatching like a jar, using like Yarn, if you're familiar with, with Hadoop. It's kind of similar concept, but then using Temo, Spark. Cinco minutos. We have five minutes. Do you want to see the, the, the demo running again? Do you want to do Q&A? Do, do you want, want to try to set up Zeppelin? Do you want to do Zeppelin? a wrap up on the demo? What do you guys want to do? The thing about Zeppelin is that we have, so there is a, the, re, the readme file I was showing you guys before. Where is the readme file? There you go. Has all the steps. So it's all available on GitHub. And also, another, another thing that I think it's important, uh, just if you are going to play at home, uh, here I have all these steps to start the things and set up and blah, blah, blah. And here is how you would set up a VM, like Ubuntu-based, like a host using Ubuntu. These are all the steps you have to do to set up like another box, like RVM. Maybe better, RVM had some glitches. And the last thing, and then I'll switch to Fred, there is also this Raspberry Pi A doc, which, is, which are the steps you have to do inside the Pi in order to enable uh, the Wi-Fi monitoring. Unfortunately, we don't have like Pi's for everybody, but it like, has all the steps. If you guys have any questions, just 
Yeah, and that will be around for a while. I mean, if I have any other Twitter, questions. Twitter, email. Your cell phone? Yep. What so just phone? because some people haven't seen it, and actually I would like to make a wrap up to everything you've seen. Um, we have basically XD running here, right? Just started playing. It has no streams running. Let's check that on the web interface. Refresh. No streams running in XD. XD is clean. I have actually a JFish, or Geode, sorry, started with the regions here, but it has no data other than a, basically a simulation. It's not any data on a base clan the pies or anything. So what we're going to do is start the web interface and deploy a stream that is going to listen to the pies on the port 9000, applies that splitter, that transformation that adds the distance, the same one we did. And after that, send the data to Gemfire on the region called probe requests using the timestamp as a key. So we don't keep uh, basically adding, uh, replacing from it, just adding it. I deploy this here, so you should already be listening to that port 9000. Our console application should be up, but without any data. So let me refresh it. Yep, it's clean. Now what we're going to do, let's go to the pies. I'm connected to them here. And I'm going to start the client on the three Raspberry Pis. It's going to take a few seconds to start. You start to get the information on the XD, start to geode. Calculate the distance, calculate the location, and show on the dashboard. Again, it's basically compiling the source code. It takes a few seconds to start the griddle. Starting, starting, starting. Running, running, running. We actually got some information. These are the fields that are arriving from the Pi. So device ID, the signal, which basically the strength of the signal, the ID of the Pi is capturing the frequency of the signal it used to calculate the distance, the timestamp that is the key, and the distance that we add as part of that um, algorithm. So if we go back to our UI, you still already see some devices being captured. Let's refresh it to show the pies that arrived as well. Um, let me make sure I put them on the right place. This is one. That is two. So two stays there. This is one that comes here. This one should be actually. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a kind of weird setup because the room is small. So it's let's reconfigure this to be uh, the distance, like five meters here. It's like five here. So sim some devices, mostly close to that pie, and come in. If we unzoom it, you're going to see that most that are being captured are not here in this room, but are actually on that place. It's basically the conference. That pie around here. These are the basically address, the addresses, and uh, we can actually filter one of the devices and start tracking it here. So again, it's it's a sample, it's a demo. Something useful we can do with the data coming from things. Um, based on that, rest, based on that Spark SQL interface, we can do all sorts of fancy things. 
um, with real-time analytics. We can also f uh, actually overflow this data to Hadoop and do some big data analytics as part of that. We can get another interface. We can start measuring different kind of data. Those devices can attach different sensors to cap different kind of data. It's just a very easy setup for a first IoT complete solution. For, for, for the next time, we're also thinking about doing part of the processing we are doing in Spring XD in Spark itself, and maybe like leverage some machine learning as well to do like a, mo a more accurate prediction about like where the devices are going using the Spark script. But yeah, uh, I guess that's it. I'd like to thank you all for the patience, like the lab and the zips and the VMs and whatever. Nine different technologies. Yeah, so it's, it's a lot of stuff, I know. It's a lot of stuff, it's all cool. We wanted to make it very broad, but... Yeah. Thank you. Any, any, any final questions before we wrap up? And we are here for getting any questions back. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>